Good morning and welcome to church. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen and amen. My name is Jeremy Grenhart and I serve as the music director at Christ Lutheran in Bethesda, Maryland. And my co-host of St. Cecilia and I are coming to you live and direct from our living room in Philadelphia this morning, offering you a welcome. If you've been with us this whole season or for a few seasons, uh, we welcome you back and it's great to see you. And if you're new to this space, uh, wherever you are, whatever time you're listening to it, it could be Sunday morning or Sunday evening, you could be on the East Coast, you could be in Chicago, wherever you're from, whatever time you're listening, we just want to let you know that you are most welcome in this space. There are no exceptions. Amen. Well, we're welcoming you here on, uh, it's the end of the Easter season, and it's also, we're celebrating the Ascension today, so Pastor Lou's going to bring us a great word about that, so we look forward to that. And this is going to be the last week that we kind of do this space in the beginning of our service where we pray about the things that we are growing. So I hope that this season, whatever you're growing personally or in your relationships or in our ministry, that it's starting to sprout little buds up and uh, we spend the rest of the season growing these things together. Um, and whatever they are for you, let's just take a, a moment out of our day to pray about them right now. Lord, and as we come back together, we just ask that all the prayers of your people for everything that they're praying for um, bear fruit in Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. Well, let's sing our Gloria for the last time this season. From Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cry to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord. O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, 
I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lolita John. I serve on Christ Lutheran's Council, and I'm a member of Christ Lutheran. Today's reading is taken from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Here begins the reading. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Here ends the reading. Always good to be with the people of Christ Lutheran Church. Or should I say, Happy Easter. Uh, it's still Easter. Uh, that's part of the genius of the church year, is that Easter cannot be confined to one day. Celebration of the resurrection of our Lord cannot be confined to one day. Uh, it needs a whole season. So we're now at the third Sunday of Easter. Each of the Gospels is different in their, their depiction of the resurrection. Each offers a special gift. And this Sunday, we get to look at the, the account in Luke's Gospel you remember the, the appearance of Jesus to his gathered disciples, but first of all, Easter dawn, the women go to the tomb. They find it empty. They're perplexed. They, they find two angelic figures in the tomb who say, Why do you seek the living among the dead? And then there's an interlude where there are two disciples who are disillusioned, disappointed, they're, they're heading home. They're, they're headed toward Emmaus. And they're encountered on the road by Jesus. And Jesus opens their minds to understand the scriptures. And then when they get to where they're going, uh, they recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And this is then where the, uh, the gospel begins. They rush back to Jerusalem. The, they find the others gathered together in great excitement, and they tell their story. The two on the road to Emmaus. This is uh, Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 33. Glory to you, O Lord. And the disciples, the two disciples arose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them, who said, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to them on the road and how they had known him in the breaking of the bread. As they were saying this, Jesus himself stood among them, but they were startled and frightened and supposed that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, 
Why are you troubled, and why do questionings rise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a ghost has not flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And while they still disbelieved for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There are four words here that stand out to me as if they were written in, in bold, in all caps, uh, italicized, underlined, and highlighted. Jesus saying to them four words. It is I myself. That's the gift that Luke's account gives us. It is I, myself, look at me. Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. There's the gift. What is it like, this resurrection? What is he like, having been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have risen from the dead, as the scriptures say? What shall we be like sharing the promise of this resurrection? The resurrection of Jesus invites us to lay aside one of the primary questions of human existence. Is there more? Is there life beyond what we can experience here and now. Is there life beyond death? That question stands at the center of human philosophy and religion. It occupies our thoughts, our hopes, our longings. It inhabits our fears and our misgivings. The resurrection of Jesus invites us to lay that question aside once and for all, and to lay it aside with a resounding yes. When we proclaim that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, we are giving that profound yes to that decisive question of human existence, and we are answering that question definitively and absolutely. Yes, yes indeed. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Now we can take that question and indeed lay it aside and take up another question. Since there is life after death, what will life be like? What will we be like? Will we be absorbed into the collective consciousness like a drop of water falling into the ocean? Will we be reincarnated into another form entirely, morphed into yet another being? Will we be disembodied spirits hovering unseen like ghosts? Will we be angels 
with wings reclining on clouds? Will we be chemical compounds accidentally brought together at one point, now breaking down earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, as if that were the very last word? What will we be like? See, here's Luke's gift. The resurrection of Jesus is the best answer to that question. What will we be like? Look at Jesus, risen from the dead. What is he like? Look, he says, handle me and see that it is I myself. If ever words were packed with meaning, these are the ones. It is I myself. Don't look for someone else. Don't look for another form, another being. Don't look for some altered form of consciousness. It is I myself. Don't look for someone else. Don't look for another form, another being. It is I myself. God, according to our faith, God is the great respecter of persons. And why not? Since God is a personal being. And God has created us as persons in our own right. Each with our own personal identity and a, a unique set of personal qualities. What will we be like? will be like Jesus, a person. To those gathered in Jerusalem thought they were seeing a ghost, they were terrified. They thought they were seeing a phantom, an illusion, or perhaps a figment of their own imagination. A fearful presence that brought terror to their minds. But Jesus presents himself as a person, he is known and recognizable. He is familiar and authentic. Touch me and see. And at the same time, pinch yourself. Touch me and see. For a ghost has not flesh and bones as you see that I have. Don't look for an alien presence. Don't look for a disembodied spirit. Touch me and see. God created us not only as persons, but as persons of, of substance, flesh and bones, atoms and molecules, cells and corpuscles, veins and arteries, body, mind, and spirit. That, that's the biblical definition of, of what it means to be a whole person. We're body, mind, and spirit all intricately woven together and inseparable. See, this stuff matters. It's essential to the whole. It's not disposable, it's not temporary, it's not secondary. It's the way God created us to be, the way God wanted us to be. That's a, a, it's a very Hebrew understanding of who we are and, and what we're created to be. Touch me and see that it is I myself. This is Luke's gift to our celebration of Jesus' resurrection. That's the, the miracle of the resurrection. It, it puts all the re back into life. Resurgence, renewal, revital. Re, 
rest restoration, resurrection. We say it every time we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the resurrection of the body. See, that's, that's actually redundant. Resurrection means physically renewed, physically revivified. It is of the body being added is just for emphasis and to guard against just spiritualizing it away. Touch me and see that it is I myself invites us to understand ourselves in that way as whole people created by God to be and continue to be whole people, body, mind, and spirit. It's the writer of, of First John who offers full confidence. He says in that great passage in First John, Beloved, beloved, we are children of God now. What we shall be is yet to be revealed. What we do know is this. When he, Jesus, is revealed, we shall be like him. For we will see him as he is. What shall we be like? We will be like him. And what could be better? See, that's, that's worth celebrating. This Sunday, the third Sunday of Easter, and on and on and onward. Then, Look how his disciples give witness to his resurrection by doing what he does with confidence, without fear. Imagine. Thanks, Pastor Lou. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. We appreciate you. Well, let's sing one of my favorite hymns. It's called uh, This Joyful Easter Tide. And then Taylor is going to move us into the prayers of the people. Here we go. This joyful Easter tide. Yeah. 
Church. Thank you for joining our service today. My name is Taylor Lee, and I serve as one of the worship leaders here at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church, and I invite you into our time of our prayers of the people. This is a special time during our service in which we bring the celebrations and the concerns of our hearts and minds to God. As we come together in prayer, we ask you to clear your mind of those burdens in which trouble you and to leave them at the foot of the cross in Jesus' holy name. We invite you to take a position of prayer that best suits you in your space as we give this time back to God. For our world, we pray for those places in the world in which are under military violence and civil unrest. We pray especially for the victims of the Myanmar killings and the families affected. We pray for sustained peace in the areas that need it and compassion and wisdom among global leaders and officials for the good of their governed citizens. We are starting to see a decline in COVID-19 cases in our communities as more people are becoming vaccinated, but God willing, we still have quite a journey to go. However, we can still celebrate the small victories as they provide hope for our neighborhoods to return to a sense of normalcy. Lord, help us not to be weighed down by the woes in which this world gives us, but to turn our focus towards the joy you provide. Let us con- Your death gave us hope for everlasting life if we seek you. Let us consider how powerful it is to know you will provide all that we need if we have faith in you. Help us to carry this message of love in our hearts and shine your light throughout our community. Let us also find a way to be blessings to others and give more of ourselves this Easter season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us growth, send us grace. People are suffering, Lord, from social injustice issues to health issues as we continue to see COVID-19 cases rise in certain places in the U.S. There's so much pain being faced, and in some cases, being faced in silence. The good news is that we don't have to suffer alone. Lord, we pray for healing and justice to those who have been treated unkindly. We pray for healing and prosperity to communal entities and businesses as they provide resources to our communities. Strengthen us to continue to press on no matter the challenge. And let us be steadfast in our prayers and our actions to turn things around. Allow the voices of those being marginalized and quieted to be heard for the change that we need. We pray for the victims and the families of those affected by police brutality, specifically the last police shooting in Minnesota of 20-year-old Dante Wright. Social media brings so much more awareness of the ways injustice affects us all and gives way to fear. Lord, help us to find comfort in your love even when we don't understand. Help us to look to you in a world of senseless violence. Cover us in your mercy and your grace, God. We know you provide peace that surpasses all understanding through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us growth, send us grace. For our church, Lord, this season of Easter gives us the gift of hope. Last year, churches stood against the possible closure um, due to COVID-19 and While some unfortunately did, your Holy Spirit allowed us and others to discover unique ways to reach out to others through virtual means unlike ever before. This proved not only how powerful the church collective is, but how your word is a living word that transcends our human expectations. Allow us to continue to grow in you, Lord, just as Jesus' resurrection provided hope for forgiveness for our sins and the assurance into eternal life. We hope to stand firm against whatever may come. Help us to remember that your ultimate triumph allows us to have confidence in which nothing can shake. We are blessed to have the means to connect with each other through this virtual worship experience. Continue to grow the ways in which we make disciples, Lord. We thank you for our reader, Ajilta, Pastor Shutzi for his message today, our organizers, editors, musicians, those who share our service with family and friends, and all others who put forth a labor of love to bring our service and worship experience to more homes. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 through 10 tells us, But now you must rid yourselves of all things such as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and put on the new self which has been renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator. Lord, find your way into our hearts this week. Lord, allow this invitation to incite a renewal of our mind, body, and spirit and cast off those things in which prevent us from seeing your face this week. Be with us in all of our moments, whether weak or strong. Thank you in advance for encouraging and keeping us, oh God. We offer a prayer to those battling illness. May God comfort you and heal you. We pray for those who struggle with the loss of a family or friend. May God offer you comfort and healing during this difficult time. We pray that a community of family and friends surrounds you and reminds you that you are loved and supported. We now open up the virtual spiritual space for the prayers of the people. Please feel free to take this moment of silence to offer any prayers that you might have, either aloud or silently, up to God. kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forevermore let the church say amen thanks taylor we appreciate you getting get into that. That's, that's quite a range in there. We appreciate you. Well, as always, as you have prayer requests, be in touch with us. We'd love to be praying for you. And you can do one of a few things. You can just leave a comment right below, and you can be in touch with me directly or anyone on the Cool Council, and it would literally be our joy and our pleasure to be praying for you. Amen. And we need your help as well. Uh, living generously and giving to the ministry requires your support. So as you're so inclined, uh, take five minutes, go to our website. It's, it's ChristLutheranBethesda.org. There you can find ways that you can engage the ministry and also live generously with us. All right, look, well, let's sing together one more time.
is our God. People of God, please receive this benediction. Almighty God, bless us now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you.